Wow, it's very hot and dry and uncomfortable here and there are spiny plants everywhere. I'm heading into the upland forest and I'm looking for little tree seedlings, no taller than this ruler. That means I can put them in the upper level of the ecodome and they have room to grow. Now this little seedling has got the dry spiny leaves of an upland forest plant. It's small enough to fit into the upper level of the ecodome and still have plenty of room to grow. And I have my biologist spoon and now I'm going to dig the seedling up very carefully. Here's a seedling. Look at its tiny little leaves. These will soon become spiny and dry. Now in some places the law prohibits you from digging up little seedlings in the wild. This is not a problem. Just go along to your local nursery and find some plants that are dry adapted or are succulents. It's very hot here, very dry. I've got my two sample seedlings. I think I'll collect one more and then I'm going to head back to the laboratory to put these seedlings on the top level of our ecodome. Now here we are down by the stream. Now you can see these beautiful little plants that are growing here. Most people wouldn't look at them, but we do because we're biologists. You can see the green moss here, but right there is a beautiful little plant called a liverwort. And that liverwort is telling me that the water in this stream is chemically very pure. It's what we call a biological indicator of stream health. Now we're going to collect a couple of samples of the liverworts and the moss and take them up to the ecodome. Now I have my scientist spoon here. I'm going to collect just a small sample of these two plants, like so. And I'm going to take them back to the lab. Well, here we are. Welcome to the Wild Science Laboratory. You can see I've been at work already on the Ecodome. I've just been down to the stream and I've collected some wonderful samples to go at the lower level of our Ecodome. Now I'm going to give you a guided tour of the Ecodome while I put these samples into it, but you'll need to come a lot closer, okay? The Ecodome is divided into four completely different zones. The top one we call the Upland Lake. Water collects in here, naturally, runs down through these little waterfalls into an area we call the upland forest. Dry plants live up here. Any water that comes in gradually comes out through these little waterfalls into what we call the lowland area. Now this lowland forest is very wet and swampy and water that collects in it can also come through here into a very big lowland lake. Now you can see in the lowland forest here what look like little pieces of glass. Those are in fact water gel crystals that come mixed with substance called vermiculite. Now we supply this in the Ecodome kit. You mix this with the soil like so. Any dirt will do from the garden or even the roadside and it keeps it beautifully wet all the time. That's what we need in the lowland. Now look what I've collected. Mosses, as probably you all know. This is a folios lichen, and it's just growing on a twig, and it tells me that the air is extremely pure around here. This is the lichen that we saw before, which says, well, it can grow almost anywhere, that lichen. These are bryophytes that were growing down by the stream. They say that the water is very clean. And I've got here a big lump of rotting wood. And I'll tell you why we put that in there in a minute. Now we're going to put some plants in this area here. Finally, 
Emily. Log. And we're going to put this right there. And this I might put right there. The reason I put this piece of dead wood in here is it's got a lot of fungi, good bacteria, and little creatures living inside it that are breaking it down, turning it into soil. Just the thing that we need inside our ecodome to make it a complete ecosystem. Now, this is the little tree we collected from the upland forest. And you can see I've planted it in a dry area with dry stones covering the bottom. It's not very tall, but it should grow. These plants actually come out of a garden. You don't have to go out into a forest or out into a park. You can collect just plants from your garden. But look at these, they're what we call succulents. And over here is actually a bit of a cactus that will grow too. So you can be very creative with whatever you want to put into your ecodome. Down below, in the wet area, this plant did not come down from near the stream. It came out of a wet area of a garden. And we just like the look of it. So you can do whatever you want, but just think about whether they are dry area or wet area plants. Now we need to add water, which is the lifeblood of any ecosystem. I'm going to fill the lower lake first, like so, and then I'm going to fill the upland lake until it trickles over its little waterfalls. And if you look closely, there it goes. It's just running down there. Perfect. Now the ecodome is all about the science of ecosystems. And water and how it moves in an ecosystem is really important. So look, we've got a water measurer, a depth measurer in the lake. When we seal this ecosystem, when the water level in the lake goes up or down, it means the water is somewhere else, but it's still inside the ecodome. There are two rulers here to measure the growth of plants. As plants grow, they must absorb water, so you'd expect the water level in the lakes to go down. We also need to measure temperature, because the growth rate might depend on the temperature inside the ecodome. Also, water moves from the top lake to the bottom lake and back up again through rainfall inside the ecodome. Yes, it rains inside the ecodome. We also need to keep track of the temperature outside the ecodome. And right here is an identical thermometer on the outside of the ecodome. Now this ecodome can get to 6 to 10 degrees Celsius hotter than the outside air just by standing anywhere near sunlight. In fact, it shows the greenhouse effect. This ecodome is what we call a sealed system. Nothing gets out and nothing gets in except light and heat, just like planet Earth and light and heat coming in from the sun. But we can also turn it into what we call an open system, and this is how we do it. On the side, we have this special port. I pull out the black stopper and I can pull out the white stopper like so, air can come in the side. But where does it go to? If I turn the ecodome right around, we take out the roof cup. Now air can travel in and out of the ecodome. But how do we see that air movement? Right here we have a little flagpole and a spinner. Now this spinner is very sensitive to air movements. Just watch. As I lift, it spins one way. As I drop, it spins the other way. I lift, it spins one way. I drop, it spins the other way. Very sensitive to air movements. It has a red and a blue arrow on it. Why? Well, we'll show you. Let's turn around this way. I can put the flagpole in the centre hole like so, 
and we put the spinner on top like so. If warm air builds up inside here, it will rise through this port and the spinner will turn in one direction. If air travels downwards, the spinner will travel in the opposite direction. This is our little wind indicator and yes, the Eco Dome builds up its own weather patterns, but to see that, we need to put it in the sun. Now the outside temperature is 28 degrees C. We look on the inside, we see the temperature is about 30 degrees Celsius. Already the warming has started. We look at the spinner and it is not moving yet. The Ecodome needs six degrees Celsius temperature difference between outside and inside to start spinning. Now we can see the outside temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. Let's look at the inside temperature. It's 34 degrees Celsius. When there is six degrees temperature difference between the two, the spinner will start to turn. Now we're going to seal the Ecodome with a specially shaped lid. Like so. Now we haven't finished yet because there is a big hole here a port that air can travel in and out of the ecodome through. So we seal it with what we call the roof cup. These ports at the side are also sealed. This is now a completely sealed system. If we weigh it now, let's say it weighs five kilograms, in six months time it might look completely different inside, but it still weighs five kilograms because it's a sealed system, just like planet Earth. If we leave this in the sun, the inside temperature will heat up, water will evaporate, and it will condense on the roof of the ecodome, just like clouds condense high up in our sky. And when it rains, most of the rain will run down into the upland lake, just as most of the rain falls on the high ground on our planet Earth. Now you can see we brought our Ecodome inside and the rain is slowly stopping. Now you don't have to take your Ecodome outside for this to happen. You can put it in a window where it might get sun maybe an hour a day. If that's the case, fantastic. But if you don't have sun, no problems. The Ecodome will carry on quite happily just working on the humid air inside. Something else I'd like to show you. All our ecosystem wild science kits come with tubes and you can connect your ecodome to other kits like this. That's the reason for that little black stopper. You can connect this to ant jungle, worm farm. Just imagine ants and worms, they travel at night through these tubes. That's why they're called night crawlers. They travel in and out of the ecodome. So you can build up this fantastic world with animals and plants in your house. Now if you want to see these sets in action just go to wildscience.net and check out our other videos. This booklet that comes in the box has got tremendously exciting ideas all the way through. It explains how global warming happens, all sorts of different experiments to do and it contains what we call our eco diary here and so you can fill in the changes that happen in your planet over time. Now, that's all from me now. Thanks very much for joining me in the Wild Science Laboratory. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>